Cemetery, so we redid the entire cemetery building. It's all redone. It's all new. Transfer station out by the, I don't know if y'all know what that is. That's where you can go dump trash. Is our transfer station, and that's where we dump all of the trash that we pick up into a huge compressing truck, and they call it off. <clears throat> but we redid a transfer station. We have a new building for a pumper truck at the sewer plant, so we don't have to park it at the PD anymore. And we have the water plant drying beds. They are almost done. Their deadline was September 7th. But I really think they should be done in the next two weeks. Every time I say that, Ron's like, don't jinx it, don't jinx it, don't say that. But we're really almost there. I don't know if any of you have been out to the, to the lake. But you can see them. They have a pretty blue bed to them. And that's where all of the dirt that we get out of the water and any kind of debris, leaves, any of the biologics that we filter out <clears throat> goes over there. We put polymer in it. It goes over there. It filters out. goes to the bottom. We can scrape it off. Um, there was some letters being sent around saying that we had a problem with that because it was, you know, right at $900,000 for those drying beds. We have no problems with the drying beds. The drying beds are amazing. The sewer plant has actually had them for many years, and we knew that they worked. And so the drying beds allow us, I don't know if any of you have ever looked at the drying beds or what you, if you even knew what they were. I didn't. Be honest, till I became the mayor, I didn't know what any of this stuff was. But now, everywhere we go, he laughs because I'm like, Oh, that's a water plant, let's go look at it. <laughs> but the drying beds are big mud and clay dishes, is what they look like to the left of the water plant. That's what we had before. Well, for the wa water to filter out of that and us to be able to get the dirt out took about <clears throat> three weeks to a month. So once we got the new Super Pulsator building out there where we can pump a whole lot more water, and we actually only have one side open right now because we didn't have anywhere to put the sludge from it, we will be able to do all of that. We'll be able to get both sides of the Super Pulsator building open and running. We do not have the capability to run excessively right now. So in Henrietta, without that storage tank that we're building, the million gallon storage tank, and I'm going to get griped out for this too since Bruce is videoing this. But we would seriously be out of water in about less than 24 hours, depending on use, right now, if our plant was down for any amount of time. Because we have one tower that has water. <coughs> That's why we got a $450,000 CDBG grant, which is a block grant. <clears throat> we got it towards that million gallon tank. And the... Um, Indian Health Services gave us 202000 to go towards it because it was needed. There wasn't a want. It was a definite need because we had no backup storage if anything went wrong in Henrietta. So we got all the tie-ins done to that. We didn't tell anybody we were doing them. Thank Bruce. But we didn't tell anybody we were doing them because we didn't want people drawing up a bunch of water and getting things ready because we didn't think there would be a problem. We did get all of them done successfully. We have one T that we're fixing today, but it was a, a long, drawn-out process to get all of that done. BRB is the contracting group that's doing that. They're the same ones that did our uh, drying beds at the lake, and they have whipped right through it, got everything done that needs to be done. Maybe a couple of change orders coming because we ran into some dirt problems that we didn't know would be there until you start digging. That's not open to the public. You can't drive up there because it's water. So water has to be secured since the 9-11 stuff. But if you want to see it, I would be more than happy to take anybody up there that wants to see it. The tank, you should be able to see it start going up probably in about three weeks. They should start pouring the cement and getting it going. What was really cool to see was the takedown of that tank. They had a company come in and take the tank down. And y'all could see, the one you can see from my 40 and 75, that big metal tank that had been up there forever. <clears throat> it took them, to have it on the ground was four hours. To have the entire thing down. Bruce was having coffee and Ron called him and said, if you want a picture, you better get up there. Because they seriously, that's all they do. And so it took them less than eight hours to have everything off the ground and gone. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Can you tell them the average cost of those water towers? Like a dollar a gallon. gallon. <clears throat> so if it's a million gallon? 
It's a million dollars is what we're paying for this storage tank. But it, it's a little more than that. It's 1.2 because you have to figure in, you have dirt works, you have other things that you have to do. But getting the $652,000 in grants helped significantly so the city didn't have to eat all of that. But when you have a grant out there waiting and you're waiting to build, you can't apply for other grants. You have to wait till that's complete and you show that you did everything successfully in the grant that you have. So that kind of holds us up and that's why you see cities where they go, 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 go and you can get things done and then it seems like they've slowed down. Well, you can only apply for so many things and complete them and prove that you can complete them before you can move on. But as far as getting things done in the city, I think we're <clears throat> moving right along. We have um, the Sportsman's Alliance group. I don't know if you watched the last council meeting, but we voted on a dock for Nichols Park. They are coming down. It's the unions that work all through the country. They're not just Oklahoma unions. They're everywhere. They will be coming down September 30th. They will spend the entire day, they want volunteers to come help, they bring all their own machinery, they bring workers with them, they're gonna replace that old dock and put a brand new one in. But while they're here, their plan is to put all new picnic tables in, some with forms, some they're gonna move big boulders to make picnic tables out of them because they think it would be historic to the park to have that. They're building all new grills that they're making in one of their sheet metal union places somewhere here. Josh Craig has been instrumental in helping get all of that set up and done, and Linda Gerster. They will spend probably 12 to 24 hours here, I don't know, but when they show up, they're ready to work, and that's what they want to do, and they want as many volunteers there to help. They've done jobs throughout the state, and they said most of the time when they get there and the volunteers are there, they spend eight to 10 hours on what would take a two or three week job to get stuff done. They also plan, and I've only heard rumor of this, so I don't know that it's a fact. The pavilion that is between the beach house and the park on the other side that has the, the rock walkway that you can walk out on, they're going to roof that. And so Nichols Park is getting there. We voted on the bathrooms that actually, I'll give David Bullard credit for that. He found them on Craigslist. We have <clears throat> searched and searched for prefab bathrooms for out there, like the football field has. They're $150,000 unless you're a school. So we debated on how we could fund that, where we came up the money for it, and David found one that was an army surplus for $5,000. In Henrietta, <clears throat> sitting on some property. So Ron and I went and looked at it. I said, okay, our council meeting's on Tuesday. Let's get it on the agenda. I don't want them to sell it out from under us. And they did, and they told us they would hold it and see if it passed council. It did. We're working on getting uh, the cement pad poured out there for that this week. I don't know when it'll be in place. We're going to put it in place. I don't know when it will be open because we have to attach it to the septic tank and make sure that all of that works properly because there's a, a swimming lake there. So we don't want it to end up running into the lake or something to that effect. <clears throat> Where are we putting it? Yeah, we're on the lake. You know, the, when you come down the hill to the beach house, that circle area that's grass and trees right there where you can circle around by the beach? Right. <clears throat> Not over where the dock is, but on the east side where the road actually circles around to go back up the hill. Yeah, on the east side where the other <laughs> shelter is, the, where that is. Well, it's, it's just a grassy area, a round grassy area that's sitting right there in the center that you can just drive. Like if you were going to pull up on the east side of the beach house, that circle area, circle road, right in the center of that. So then people at the ball games can actually walk down to it. It has showers in it and stalls. So they will be able to shower and everything. There's a men's side, a women's side. And there is not an ADA compliant bathroom. There is not a handicap accessible bathroom. But it had a washer and dryer in there. So what we're going to do is take the washer and dryer room, because it's actually the first room when you walk through the door on the right, <clears throat> and make it a handicap accessible bathroom and build a ramp. And so for $5,000, you can do a lot of things compared to $150,000. You know, somebody to maintain and clean it? <laughs> well, we'll lock it just like we do. Oh. <clears throat> okay. It doesn't stop them from breaking in it. It doesn't stop them from shoving it full of paper towels. We will probably put a camera system on. We've already talked to Ron 
McAfee about putting camera systems in on different things that we have right now because of the vandalism. We actually get our water towers and our pump stations vandalized routinely. I know McCutcheon Park, the bathrooms have been broken to multiple times with damage to them. He saw all the spray painting. They spray painted all the signs up there on all the new toys. They've already cut all the straps off of the new toys. <clears throat> Every one of the swings, the handicap swing, they use bolt cutters and cut some of the straps off it. When did they do that? Go look at it. You just haven't noticed. It's done. <clears throat> A few weeks ago, uh, we have volleyball nets and a volleyball area put up at Nichols Park. I don't know if you've seen it. Also, we put sand out at Henrietta Lake where they play volleyball as well. The volleyball nets have been... The council approved those probably three years ago, but they never got put up. So this year, Ron made a special effort to make sure they got put up, and they're up. And there's been multiple people out there playing every day. They we did not them. provide a volleyball because it would disappear every day. Yeah. <laughs> they just got the sand put in in an afternoon, and that evening they were already out there playing. That's awesome. I mean, it's just like, here's sand, they will come. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you know Sherry Black that was raised here, Ron and Kalola Black, Black's daughter. Um, her and her husband live in Aunt Moggy, Travis Parker and Sherry Parker. They actually came to the council. They didn't make the meeting. Last Friday we had a special meeting. They're going to have a vintage dirt bike race at Nichols Park. And the bikes will be 1950s to 1980s. And they don't do anything crazy like okra they don't race through the woods go through all kinds of stuff they want something slow and easy for he said you know sometimes they have 90 year olds that come race with them <laughs> and so he said they don't want anything that's going to hurt somebody they want something fun they're part of it they're going to build jumps behind the caretaker house so right to the south of the rodeo arena in that circle area right there so then it's visible to anybody that wants to come watch that will be the last weekend of September, so it's the 29th, 30th, and October 1st. And we approve that for them to use the park. They're only going to close it for four hours certain times in certain parts of the park because they want people to be able to go to the beach. The beach should be over by then, but they don't want to exclude people from being able to go to the park if they're going to be there. <clears throat> Do y'all have any questions? What's the whole thing with us? It's where our water is stored to put all the chemicals in and get it ready to be dispersed. It's the super pulse aggregate. It's the building, if you drive across the dam at the Henry the Lake, it's the one that's got two walls. It's the further building on the east side, but it's got two walls that come up like this. That's the one that's in litigation right now because when they built it, it wasn't sturdy and they only put quarter inch rebar in the walls. So obviously it's cement walls. I don't know, taller than this room, and they started cracking and leaking. So, I mean, cracks in the side of the wall with water running out. <clears throat> we have that fixed. We had engineers looked at it. We put the buttress walls, is what they're called up. And so, it's a really cool building. It's kind of a scary little building. I wouldn't want to do what the guys do out there. There's a ladder that my butt's too wide for, but. You have to go up and down this ladder multiple times every day with beakers in both hands. And it's a forward-facing ladder that just has steps on it, not like steps, like footsteps. So you go up this ladder. It's very narrow, is it not, Bruce? And it is straight up. And you're on metal grates when you get up there over water. They have to go up there, I don't know, four or five times a shift with two beakers in hands and come back down. Coming down, you come down facing mm -hmm. down. You don't come down backwards. <clears throat> because that's the way the steps are made. So it, it's interesting to see that. Interesting right. engineering. <laughs> I, I did not know that there had been damage up in the country park. <clears throat> you know, last week. Multiple times. Last week we had uh, someone during the night <clears throat> up all the trash cans uh, down through there. Uh, front of our place all the way down, I guess, to the bottom of that hill. But I thought that it had been very well taken care of. They've torn off the basketball goals multiple times. 
and we didn't do the cheap ones, we did the commercial ones, but now we're going to go with the cheap, cheap ones because it doesn't make any difference. So what is it you talked about cutting the straps? You talking about... On the swings, the safety straps, the seat belts, they cut them all off. I wouldn't notice that one. Right. Do you know what the time frame is for uh, ODOT to uh, have Main Street resurfaced? It's on their plan, but I think that plan's getting moved around with the budget shortfall, so I haven't heard a definite of when they're going to do it because they went further than they planned to when they did it before. They were supposed to stop at 13th Street, right? And then they went all the way to 9th and a little further, so I think we'll probably be pushed down the line for that. Quick Trip is not a rumor. They're still in negotiations with ODOT. ODOT is not wanting to give them an entrance. That is where we're at. They hired a, a traffic engineer, Quick Trip did. Traffic engineer sent them a report. Chris Wallace is the ODOT engineer that I've been dealing with out of Muscogee. I do have Scott Fatgatter working on it. I have Roger Thompson working on it, and I have Mark Wayne Mullen working on it. Because Quick Trip is vital to Henrietta. Everybody can believe what they want to believe. We're not trying to run small businesses out. And they, they have proven by their statistics that typically they pull highway traffic in anyway. They don't, if you have a routine every morning and you leave your house and you go to First Street Shell, you go to Jiffy Mart, you go to Love's, you're not going to change your routine to go all the way to the other end of Main Street to get what you want to get. So local traffic typically, I mean, granted, when it's new, people are going to want to go check it out. But after that, their statistics, and they brought it all to us when they came to HEDA and when they came to the council. And they're working very hard to be here. They still have, <clears throat> I think, four months left on their contract. So I don't know when we'll have an answer on Quick Trip. It's not because I'm not jumping through hoops trying. I was actually texting Ben McBroom as the Quick Trip contact site planner and I was texting him this morning about it and talking to uh, William Barnes with Mark Wayne Mullins office about where we are because we've been dealing with ODOT for four months and have yet to get a definite answer. So what kind of <clears throat> what kind of exit like what are you talking about? They want an entrance off of 75. <clears throat> They're saying that that's federally secured because of I-40, that they cannot have a backup of traffic there no matter what. Quick Trip will not allow cars and semis to commingle. No. Because we have the stoplight there, which the city has closed roads like Walmart. The entrance where Taco Bell comes out is actually a city street. It's just closed to through use. And so the city can do that. Okay. And so we can close that little section right there to allow them to use that road, and then Hill Street would just have to go to the next light. No big deal. So they've agreed to repave Hill Street. So they're still looking at the same place. The <laughs> um, yeah, um, the motel on the north side refused to sell. Mm -hmm. And so they bought, well, they're contracted with um, America's Best, with Zach Patel, and the Johnsons, and the Harrises. So they bought all the way from the stoplight all the way to I-40. South. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> they have plenty of property. I have the site plans on my phone. I'd be willing to show them to you. They just want the insurance because their liability insurance does not want the commingling of private vehicles with semis because of the deceleration lane for them to be able to slow down and be able to get in and out of there. That's why they hired the traffic engineer. The traffic engineer report came back and said, no problems. Give them the entrance. So then we sent that to ODOT. <clears throat> Quick trip did. ODOT responds and says, well, then we're not going to give you any of our right of way. When they'd already told them they would give them five feet of their right of way. <clears throat> well, it's one or the other. We're not going to do both. <clears throat> so that's what we're still trying to work out. Jennifer, how many uh, trucks can they accommodate in there? I think it has six. It's the exact same. It's a Generation 3 that's in Muskogee. I don't know if you've ever seen the Muskogee one at the stoplight to go to Tahlequah. It's right there on the west side of the road, and it's it's a pretty big quick trip. That's why they wanted the area that they bought. 
well, they're contracted. They still haven't bought. They still have, right now, they're paying $1,000 a month on each one of the ones they're contracted in because they've already gone beyond the first six months. <clears throat> but I wasn't aware of it until four months ago. I didn't know anything about Quitter until Ben McBroom reached out to me and was like, hey, I need some help. I don't know what, what's going on here, but we're not getting anywhere. <clears throat> and that's when I brought him to the head of me. Head has agreed to help. Shoney's is also moving right along, but they had a problem with their trusses. They weren't built to specs. So there's not a big sinkhole there, as Bruce was told, that it's about to fall into. <laughs> it's really, and I know Nancy, Nancy and Doug are super upset that this has come to this. What happened is, I guess, somewhere along the line, what I'm hearing from the code, is they changed the outlay of the building. So when they ordered them, they ordered them by the previous outlay, and so it's what's holding it up. <clears throat> but they're not happy that it's taken this long either. They were really hoping to have it all done before Labor Day. 120 days is what they said. <clears throat> yep. And Quick Trip told us less than that. If they get approval, they're going to go up to 90. <sighs> they said they don't waste time. <laughs> Will they use um, local people? <clears throat> Probably not. I don't know how they bid that out, but uh, I know they build all over. But Quick Trip is no longer corporate owned, it's individual owned. <clears throat> is what Ben told us. They have site locators and then they sell them those shares. He said they do put all of their ads for employees local first though. And then they bring other ones in to train them from elsewhere. So there any speculation around the way I would ought to be in, so. <clears throat> Their highway, their way or the highway. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they're really trying to work with them. They just keep saying it's a federal highway. 40 is federal. So 40, 40 goes all the way across. There's no way we can impede that. I don't, I don't know what else to tell them. I know Quick Trip has lots of money. So they've poured lots of money in it. The last email I got, which was two weeks ago, said they may require them to have a traffic study. <clears throat> Quick Trip responded back to all of us in the email and said if we require a traffic study, it may be a deal breaker because they're very time consuming and very expensive. And we already did the traffic engineer that says the same thing. The traffic studies, I guess, is where they put the ropes across the road and count how many cars go by at that specific area over and over and over. But I don't know. He said they're time consuming because I guess they have to do it for a long period of time to get actual numbers. Well, we have actual count numbers of what's on 75 and 40 because they've done it a billion times. But they wouldn't accept that. The traffic engineer said they had no problem with anything there. They moved it. They had originally wanted it in the middle of the land. They moved it maybe 25 feet from the stoplight now. Said if it was closer to there, it was less impeding I-40. Meaning the exit? Mm -hmm. To get into Quick Truck. You couldn't be any more impeding <clears throat> than what they're doing on the bridge right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's terrible. That's it's scary. Yes. Especially when you have to go all the way to the inside. Of the uh -huh. yeah. Well, and then we have all these heavy loads coming down our main street. Mm -hmm. The police spend every day waiting on a load to be off the railroad tracks. Steve actually called uh, ODOT last week and had it out with them because we had some big load that couldn't even fit down Main Street that they had to block it the whole way to get them through and they had to go at an angle over the tracks because they never check the routes, they just send them. So you have to get off here, wide loads have to get off here because they couldn't go across that bridge. That's why we've had so many uh, mishaps on Trojan with the uh, semis dragging the bottom on across the tracks. I don't even know if they're going, going this direction. I don't even know how they're going under the bridge. I mean, the way they have it. Mm -hmm. Well, Trojan messed up on the uh, coming in from the uh, e or east on those tracks. And uh, they come in and they just left the old hill like it was. You can't see a car coming. No. And and uh, originally what they talked about was to feather that out so you could see a car coming. That's a danger. Well, there's still a dip on Main Street. That's where they've been getting hung up every day, nearly. Since we called ODOT, it's been a little better. 
but they said they were going to set up scales out there so they could tell them where to go. I don't know if they did. I don't know if that's what helped, but something has changed it. We haven't had every day a wide load stuck on Main Street. But we had one, seriously, I don't even, I don't even know how long it was. Uh, Ron texted me pictures of it, and it was probably from um, Baker's Pond all the way down to Jiffy Mart. Stuck. I don't know. No, it was a truck. A truck. wide load. They're about three quarters of a block long and uh, 14.73 feet wide. Could you be a little more specific? <laughs> 4,300 millimeters. <laughs> and you know, this is the time of year when you have water breaks. We've been pretty lucky. We haven't had a ton of them, but that's what you see down there at 8th Street and Main Street right now. And that was a pretty scary little break. Go look at it. I saw that, that water line is over eight foot below the surface. I think under concrete by the water. Under a concrete vault. I would have quit right then. I'd been, oh, I'm out. I'm not crawling in there. I'm not going eight foot under. Did the businesses have a, have a water disruption in there? Or? Uh, they did it at night. Uh -huh. Fixed it at night. They were out till two in the morning fixing it and then it busted as soon as they got it fixed an hour later it busted on down the line because when you put in a new tie-in the old pipes not used to holding all that pressure so you get an increased pressure also I get calls all the time why is the fire hydrant open why is the fire hydrant open <laughs> if we have a break or we have to fix a line we bleed the line because dirt gets in it so we have to get pressure off by doing that and it also gets all the dirt out of the line so it's not coming to your house in that line Anywhere we have breaks, you're going to see the fire hydrants open, leading lines. Everybody's like, that's a waste of water. Well, it is, but we're going to get a whole lot more complaints if uh, you get mud in your water. You just send your kids to play in it. It's hot. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I went to a mayor conference last two weeks ago in Idabel. Idabel's way the heck down there. But um, it's a nice little town, 7,000 is their population. But they have the luxury of having a ton of money coming in because the Choctaw tribe pours money into that city. Everything they build, they still pay taxes on. They don't put it in sovereign land. So they got the best of both worlds, which I'm working with the Creeks to try to get us there someday, I hope. And... It would be great for the city and everybody involved because half of our school system is some kind of Native American because we pulled those numbers with the reintegration program. It doesn't mean they're all Creek, but they have some kind of card. About 500 students is what we figured out. So it's a quality of life thing for the tribe to help as well to bring children friendly activities to our area. We do have a new swing set out in at Nichols, too. That's just to the west of the beach house. We're going to keep developing on that, but y'all have no idea how much that stuff costs. Swing sets are like $40,000. Just put it on our water bill. <laughs> okay, got it. Ron McAfee said. Yeah, that's what he said down here. <laughs> But I did get to brag and Ida Bell. DEQ was there for the meeting, and Henrietta was seriously the very first city in the state of Oklahoma to comply with all water regulations. We have not had any letters sent out with our water or any DEQ consents since 2014. So the water we put out is equal to the steel. We put the pH up a little high so it's sweet tasting. It's comparable to smart, smart water. People that buy smart water know that it's got a sweeter flavor than spring water or any other water you get. That's what Henrietta water is. So after we discussed that at a conference, I've had multiple mayors go, send me your water. i got to check this out. <laughs> but that's all I have. Do y'all have anything for me? Mm -hmm. That's how you sound good. Yep. Good.